Hi, this is Wyvern Blazewood, a.k.a. Why Not, here for Streetwear Live. Today we have Thinkerer Selby Evans to interview. Hi, Thinkerer. Thanks for joining mm -hmm. me. Hi, Why Not. What would you like uh, to know? We got a lot we want to know. First of all, how and when did you discover Second Life, and what about this place attracted you to it? Well, I, I discovered I, many years ago, way back in, I guess, uh, 04 or 05, I was uh, doing exercise and, and listening to podcasts. And one podcast carried a, uh, a, uh, an interview uh, with, uh, what's his name? And uh, he was describing the, the guy that developed Second Life. He was describing what he was doing. And that's, at that point, that was around, that was 19, that was 2005. So he was describing it and what he wanted to do. And he was describing what he imagined it doing. It sounded very attractive to me because I, I listened, I thought, well, now I could make videos in that. Uh, and the, the general idea sounded quite attractive to me. So, uh, I immediately downloaded the information, the thing and signed up, got, got on, uh, Second Life. And, uh, uh, I was, I found it very attractive right away. And I realized, yes, I certainly could make videos and I could do a uh, stage theatrical things and meet people and talk with them and do other kinds of things. So it looked very attractive and I uh, continued in it. Uh, well, from, so from this, from, let's see, 2005, yeah, July 2005 to this day. Wow, you've been here a long time. Now uh, we yeah. know early in your uh, real life career that you worked for a government organization involved in operating reconnaissance satellites could you yes, elaborate sir. on this for for us a little well, bit well actually actually now I, I i'm i'm a retired professor and i was professor of psychology at texas christian university for quite a long time 25 years i think and i mm -hmm. also at that uh, i also uh, developed a consulting career. And that was one of the organizations that I was consulting with. Uh, uh, and I was essentially consulting on, on matters having to do with uh, image evaluation. And uh, uh, then in the image improvement, well, evaluation leads you the, gives you a basis for improving. So image improvement, uh, image enhancement, and uh, improvement in ways to handle imagery so that it would be more efficient and uh, more effective. Um, and, and I worked in the general, I, I worked in various things, jobs connected with that, actually until about 1995. I, I retired as professor in uh, 1990 uh, or 1989 or 90. and. Uh, went into full-time consulting at that point. So I really had two careers going. That's very impressive. We, we recently celebrated your real life birthday at Lawrence Place, where we do the comedy at mm -hmm. Thinker's Quest. How many other octogenarians do you know who are active in Second Life, if you know any? Well, I, I guess I know, I, I, and I would point out that uh, you all can celebrate, but actually when you get to be 86. Uh, I, I'm not sure that's a celebration. Um, <laughs> except, of course, that I, I can celebrate the fact that I haven't died since, uh, up to now. Um, <laughs> well, actually, I don't plan to die. I, 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 I've decided I'm, I'm going to live forever or die trying. Um, <laughs> the, uh, I, I know only one that I for sure is, is, is and this has to, this I, I will give I won't mention the uh, no 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 uh, person but she has Parkinson's disease and I do want to mention she has Parkinson's disease and her her uh, children are, are maintaining the land uh, an island which raises money for Parkinson's disease um, uh -huh. 
and uh, she she believes that it helps her somewhat in uh, resisting the depredations of Parkinson's disease. Uh, and I'm so it's I, that's very good to know that. Uh, yeah. And I, 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 I think a lot of people, a lot of elderly, well, a lot of people, but a lot of elderly people in particular could benefit from this. That's why I like want to get that idea, the idea out. The, I know also uh, some other people, uh, there's a, there's a fellow I know that I wrote a blog about that, uh, uh, has, uh, uh, traumatic brain in injury and he recovered mm-hmm. from that. Uh, at least in part with the help of Second Life. Wow, that's impressive. Well, that might be one way to draw more people to Second Life. Too, uh, I, would, is, yeah. I would hope so. Well, that's a question that I have further on down, so we, we want to keep that in mind there, mm-hmm. too. Uh, what do you see as the uh, biggest reason for why so many older people might benefit but won't get into Second Life? Do you think it's fear of technology, impatience, lack of outside support, or something else? Well, it's a combination, I think. Now, I, I you know, I, I'm being an octogenarian. I, I'm living in an old folks' home, um, and there's a whole bunch of people just down the hall. Most of them don't even have computers. At least about half of them don't have computers. And they still read they get their news by reading the newspaper. The, you know what those are? Those those are things that used to be printed on papers, and you get them. And and you know they were convenient for the dog because you could put it use them for the dog's doo doo, and uh, things of that sort. And, and and you know they were awfully convenient for starting a fire. Um, but other than that, they really didn't have much use. At least nowadays they don't. Um, but a lot, a lot of people simply don't don't know how to use computers and are not don't believe they can learn. Uh, and one of the you know one thing I I wish people would get away from the idea that they, that since after they got out of school they stopped being able to learn. Mm-hmm. Uh, it doesn't happen that way at all. If you stop if you stop learning, you may stop being able to learn. But if you keep learning, you don't stop. That's an excellent point. I agree a hundred percent with that. So that, gotta... that that's the main reason, and yeah, I think the other they, they could benefit from some help, but basically they're not ready. Most of the people are not even prepared to use help. They're not really asking for because you know I I can help people. And I do offer here locally to help people uh, use computers, um, but there's not many people that. Or, and, I, and occasionally, a few people I do help, but there's not very many. Yeah, that's, that's so sad that, that people feel that way. Like, you know, I'm done learning. Um, and you're never done learning unless you choose to do that. That's, that's sad. right. Well, I recently interviewed Gish Guardian, the gal who works all the theater productions at the Theater yep. and Thinker's Quest. Mm-hmm. And she sang your praises so highly. She's very grateful for your support and all her endeavors. Could you tell us a bit about how you got involved with the theater there and um, also about other people or groups that you've helped or supported? Well, actually, of course, as I said earlier, when one of the reasons I came into Second Life was I I could make movies or have be instrumental in helping getting people to make movies uh, uh, in Second Life. And uh, so I've been interested from the very beginning. Now, I was interested in making movies, but I'm interested in all theater. Obviously, I need some theatrical people to make if I'm going to make movies. And so I've been interested in all theater, all kinds of theater. Uh, and I've worked ever since I found people interested in theater, and I found that probably in a year or so. Um, I uh, have been working with various people uh, in the theater, in in connection with theater, um, and uh, uh, actually one of the first groups that I worked with uh, is is uh, it's not the first, but one of the first is Avatar Repertory Theater, which is also has a place on 
uh, on my, uh, well, on my estate. Uh, uh, it has a, a, a place on Cookie. Uh, Gish's place is on Think Request. Think Request. They're two islands that are connected. Um, and uh, that started, I think, about uh, 2007 uh, or something like that. And I, I did record some of our, I worked with somebody who was recording. Uh, some of the, uh, all, I think almost all of the, uh, the uh, of the theatrical production, uh, Midsummer Night's Dream that they had way back up, probably in, in 1907, or 2007. <laughs> not, not 1907. Don't take me to 1907. <laughs> well, recently in the past few months or so, I got a link to one of your videos, and that had, I think, Catboy Kwana. Kawana, yep. Kawana, and um, he's in the Lawrence Live Comedy Show, and a few others there too. And it was called "Flying Saucers Return" by the Avatar Repertory Theater. It was such a hoot to watch. What's the Avatar Repertory Theater exactly, and how many are, people are in it? And do you have any more videos like that one? Because that was a, a "Flying Saucers Return" is great. Well, we actually have only, the only videos we have that are like that are promos for that video. Uh, and and uh, uh, the Avatar Repertory Theater actually is a group that, uh, well, that group was formed shortly after the uh, original group that did the uh, Midsummer Night Scream uh, broke up. Uh, the Avatar Rep Theater was was formed, and uh, once I when I heard about them forming, I told them they could have some places to marry, uh, some space on Cookie for a uh, theater, and they built one. Um, and the number in there has varied. It's, I'd say the number is around ten, but it may go up to fifteen, and may drop down a bit. Um, and they they actually have they have been so they, they produced uh, yeah they had, Theatrical, theatric, theatrical productions uh, for quite a while in Second Life. They're not, I, I don't think they're active right now, uh, but they were until up until the, le, this uh, spring, uh, actively having a show at least every other week. Uh, and a show, by a show, I mean sometimes a, a, a theatrical segment, uh, sometimes uh, a demonstration of how uh, actors uh develop their skills and uh, uh sometimes little snippets from uh, from well from radio for example sometimes they the, the rewritten stories from radio that or from church stories oh uh, mm -hmm. someone and, wanted to be in that th and then in that little group how would they join that repertory uh, they theater? would contact in second life they would contact Ada Radius, um, and she would be very interested in having people with, 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 who have some experience, mm -hmm. uh, hmm. and especially, especially males, because we need male people more than females. Well, we, got, we have a reasonable number of females, but we don't have as many males as we would like to have. I think Gish oh. Guardian said the same problem. She said she's mm -hmm. always looking for males, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, you're yeah. you're at Lauren Live, Lauren's place at Cookie Thinkers Quest every week on Tuesday night for that comedy show at Lauren's. What's yep. your role in that event aside from you own the sim, and who actually owns the digs? Is it J Wheels, Jamie, or you? It's actually Lauren that owns the building uh, and ah. everything in it. The, the Lauren owns that. Uh, I own the sim, and that's really the main the main thing I'm doing right. Well, no, I also promote Lauren as you can see if you will look on my uh, at my shirt my shirt <laughs> you will see that it mm -hmm. says I love Lauren mm -hmm. uh, or, uh, and I've worn that ever, you know, I've worn that shirt unwashed ever since uh, I, I was gonna ask about the wash part <laughs> <laughs> yeah I think it was I think it was started in uh, 2007 uh, uh -huh. and, and fortunately <laughs> You, in, 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 in Second Life, avatars do not sweat. Uh, and they do not get dirty. So I now, can wear, I, I can wear it without washing. And we do not have laundries anyway. 
I think there's a laundromat somewhere in Second Life. Oh, I'm sure <laughs> there is. Oh, well, well, there is. That... Go ahead. Uh, what is what does J Wheels have to do with uh, Lawrence? Then I don't understand that. Well, J Wheels, uh, promoter. He is well. He promotes that, and he arranges for the music uh, event. That, uh -huh. that usually follows Lauren because we talked, Lauren and I talked it over, and uh, I, I, we have, when we, er, when we got started, uh, we had, we realized we had an audience coming in every week, and uh, they would be sitting there at the end of the hour, and if we put a musical act on, they were, probably a fair number of them would stay. So we decided to put a musical act on. And that's what Jay Wheels does. Um, okay. Is not, isn't Lauren the longest playing um, comedian in Second Life? I'm, I'm I... pretty sure of that. Yes, I'm pretty sure of that. It was because we started in, uh, well, actually we started in, I think maybe 1906, uh, 2006, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it might be 2007. I'm not quite sure. It was. It was as soon as voice came in. Me before that, we did not have voice. We only communicated by typing. You can't type comedy very effectively. No, no. But uh, well, and the we. People... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't. We mean anticipated. We we knew we knew that voice was coming in. And so I started, we started, Lauren and I started developing a comedy act, uh, her comedy act, uh, in the spring. The voice didn't come in until July, but we were already ready because she had worked up a comedy act and gone through the prepara preparations. Uh, I, I got a you know, TeamSpeak server for a long time, and that arranged allows people to talk to each other just like uh, voice just like our second life voice does uh, and uh, we had so we had already prepared and worked on it and had other group had groups and practiced comedy uh, before and uh, I sort of coached coached her a bit uh, Lauren and mm -hmm. uh, actually it was the, the I was uh, sort of the initiator because some it, it, the way it began was that I found, I, I saw somebody in Second Life who was looking for comedians. And uh, so I po posted a note, notice in uh, a group that we had, and, and Lauren was in the, in the group, and she came and said, um, and suggested she would be interested in doing that, especially with her voice. Um, because as you know, her voice is very fits very well for, for her, her, her work, and so that 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 and I so that was, that was one of the I, my general idea was I wanted to encourage stage activity, uh, mm -hmm. as contrasted, let's say, with role playing or other kinds of things that you might do in as the kind of things that you might do in virtual world. I wanted to have uh, theater, stage, per stage performances, dance, ballet, those kinds of things that I might have seen in a university if I were still in a university. Uh huh. Well, uh, how long have they been able to put the videos up? How long have they been able to videotape and put stuff on YouTube for from Lawrence? When did that start? Do you know? Well, that probably well, Laura, uh, well, uh, it's it didn't start with in the volume that we're doing now. Uh, Geo is Geo Meek is um, posting almost, I think almost all of the shows that are, are done now. Um, right. he's, he initially started with a smaller amount. Now he's worked up to a full, full volume, um, and um, I think in full volume it's probably been going on for just two or three years. Okay. Um, but before and, that, when do you think they started doing those videos? What's the oldest one you remember? Do you remember? I really, I really don't know, but I would guess it probably goes back to. Uh, there's probably some at, oh, taken at Lawrence Place, uh, uh -huh. starting in. It, it probably goes back at least to 2010. 
Oh, of uh-huh. course, as I say, the our, our video capture, and Gio worked with me on the video capture for for Midsummer Night's Dream. Uh, and uh, what we did, what we did there is we intentionally captured the entire show, even though there were some problems with the show as well as with our capture. But I, mm-hmm. it was the first it was the first uh, Shakespearean show done full fully and live and uh, could captured the first one in Second Life, and so we wow. wanted to do that well. Uh huh. The people at Linden Lab are currently asking for help to spread the word about Second Life, to bring in more new people and attract them to this virtual world. What do you think might be the most effective way in which to do that? Well, actually, one of the things, I, you know, there, there, there were actually, they're quite aware that their main problem is not bringing people in, but retaining it. They bring a lot of people in. But a lot of people, a lot of people don't stay, and uh, so I think their intent, where they would need to put their intention, attention, is on the early experience and getting people familiar with, aware of, and familiar with the kinds of things that are available. Uh, and uh, I tend to disagree with them on their selection of what they're promoting in their ads. Uh, the last time I saw their looked at their ads, they were promoting. Uh, be a vampire, uh, and <laughs> some, I, I, you know, I, nobody that I know in Second Life has any interest in being a vampire. Um, mm-hmm. And, and, and uh, you know, educators really don't want to be associated with vampires. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so I think they're what I would like to see them be pro- promoting. Uh, is educa- education, theatrical, video production, and those kind of oppor- uh, opportunities. Um, not that I th- I'm sure those would be all that productive in terms of getting people in, um, but I do think what I really the best thing they could do to get for not getting people in but retaining them after they come in is to have a better welcoming system. Um, I agree. Yeah, I think well, most people who <laughs> most people who have ever who have looked at the uh, welcome areas, um, or even yeah, gone by them or anything, uh, have agree are going to agree. That they need what I would like to see in a welcome area is uh, a number of yes, a number of people doing things of the kind that you would like to present. I see people doing things, but they're not of the kind that would cause people to want to be to come back mm-hmm. i agree uh, well you write a blog yep. and uh you also have lots of uh groups you work with hobo junction inksters written word virtual railway consortium which i just love my train and the rockcliffe university consortium to name some of them all this is on your profile uh, we're going to put a link to your blog on the end of this video and um, to that wonderful video of the aliens in space that I love. I just <laughs> want to thank you so much for spending this time with us, and um, I look forward to seeing you again on Tuesday night at Lawrence. Thanks. Uh, yes. Okay, I'm, I'm there. I'll be there. I know you will, up in the rafters. Streetwear Live was brought to you by Hooligans Roadside Diner, home of Ingest Comedy, featuring the stand-up comedy of Why Not, Sea Photographer, Doc Run, Roger 990, Catboy, Timory, and others. Join them every Saturday night at 5 p.m. Second Lifetime. Also, Studio A by Belladonna Couture, upbeat fashion with a flair. And Salty Sea Dog Blues and Games Club, Boat. Bowl, play a game of greedy, or watch your favorite movie with friends.
please contact DJ Zamenis, Aurora Adele, or Nick Mammoth with your special events or if you'd like to be featured on Streetwear Live.